We're here at the first concept store of Asian paints in Mumbai. We're talking about home improvement, but more importantly, a lot more than just paint. And with us is the MD and CEO, Amit Singhal. Amit, thank you so much for doing this. It's been a very long time since we've been planning this and you finally made the time. Thank you, Manglam. And I think it's been, uh, you've been really after me to kind of uh, <laughs> really be there. And I think it's a pleasure to be talking to you today. Not a lot of people know that you've been one of the oldest Asian paint employees. You've been working at Asian Paints for what, 33 years? A little more than that? Yeah, more than 33 now, 33 and a half. And uh, you're almost signs, you know, making me sound like an old man. But I can tell you that uh, the passion I started with and the passion I have now, I think has kind of only gone notches up. The question is, as an industry leader, what new vectors of growth are you seeding? More importantly, what does the next five to 10 years look like in terms of growth areas for you? Last few years, we've really embarked in terms of giving the whole area of paint and coatings a very, very different kind of a zone because we have started to kind of really look at saying that can we par be part of the consumer decor life cycle. So we are not about just the four walls. We are now about in between the walls and that's the entire strategy of uh, going from a share of surface to the share of space within the homes. You've been there for almost a decade right now without much significant headway, so to say. What is the overall objective? I think this whole strategy of being part of the consumer decor life cycle is something which we feel is going to be something which is very different, something which is unique, and something which I call it in my own words, inimitable. And therefore, what I feel is that this is the zone of uh, overall growth which we are taking because it complements our existing business in a very strong way. And not only at a frequency of once in five years, which is a normal repainting cycle, yeah. but it literally kind of gets me there every six months, every eight months, every 12 months in terms of what I look at being at the top of the mind of the customer as I see it. So in these adjacencies that you spoke about, there have been some which have been extreme successes, some not so much. Let's talk about the ones which have done well. Um, you have waterproofing. What, what exactly is the total annual salience of waterproofing and are you the biggest company right now when it comes to B2C waterproofing? We got into the waterproofing zone because of the fact that we felt that customers were blaming everything on the paint, mm -hmm. literally. Uh, we've been now into waterproofing for the last about almost eight years and the journey has been explosive. You know, we now are the number one player in terms of the retail market. We've taken the whole positioning of being a lighthouse brand in mm -hmm. terms of what we call as the smart care which is there. And we look at uh, really providing solutions to the customer and taking the mantle of saying that you are the expert in waterproofing. Unfortunately, that hasn't reflected in the other verticals that you've seeded. Case in point, you know, your bath fittings, your kitchen fittings, some of the other lighting solutions, some of the acquisitions that you've made as well. So you bunch all those numbers up together. They yeah. don't add as much to the waterproofing success that one has seen. See, right? I would say that, you know, uh, a waterproofing model is something which came in naturally to the paints. You know, it was something which literally gelled because it's, goes, it's going in something which, as a substrate. It is going in the foundations. So I think it was very easy for us to kind of really seed waterproofing in the market. When you look at the whole area of home decor, in fact, when we bought in kitchen and bath, okay, we bought some very small companies into the whole game and we started and we struggled literally in terms of looking at what we have been doing for the last about almost seven years. Till about three years back, we kind of got that really aligned in our home decor strategy because we realized very strongly that with just two categories, mm -hmm. you can't appropriate home decor. But I think the newly formed strategy, which we have kind of just got in about three to four years back, is now being an integrated decor player. And I think that is something which is the change which we are seeing, which would catapult some of these categories to the successes what we've seen in waterproofing. With the kind of balance sheet that you have, with the kind of brand power that you have, I'm sure there would be a lot more bigger inorganic opportunities in the home decor space. Absolutely. So as we are looking at going ahead, uh, we, we are looking at offering almost uh, everything which really goes into a home to that extent. And as I speak, uh, we've got into lighting, we've got into UPVC doors and windows, we've got into 
a wooden flooring, kitchen and bath is already with us. We've got into fabrics and furnishings as I look at it. And therefore, as we kind of go ahead, we are always on the lookout in terms of saying that is there something which really synergizes in terms of our strategy, in terms of making it big to that extent. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, in India, if you look at a lot of these players are regional. They're not like pan India in terms of looking at their approach. We would like to kind of get into something which is far more stronger in terms of looking at a pan India approach in terms of going forward. But there are a lot more listed companies, there large are, players, and are. some of them were also on the block a couple of years ago. Yeah, now they're still, they yeah. still on the block is, as I see it. But I think the brand has to have some strength. You know, a lot of these brands have become like a commodity. Okay, they are not. Or really you buy a commodity and add the Asian Paints brand and. So give that's that what I think the idea is in terms of looking at it because see there is no point in terms of looking at paying a 10, 15 times a bid down on a certain bigger kind of a brand in a category and then seeing that you're not able to grow that. In three or four years from now, if I had to look at your revenue mix, how much would come from the decorative paint? Of course, a large chunk would be there, but you have eight to 10 percent coming in from home decor. You have industrial, you have international, any other areas that you're seeding? I mean, how does the revenue mix of Asian paints look? So as I see it uh, today, uh, global is uh, close to about 8 to 10 percent of our overall category. Industrial is about 4 to 5 percent, and we think that industrial would kind of really grow to about 7 to 8 percent in terms of going ahead to that extent. Decor is the other one in terms of which keeps on growing. And if you look at all the adjacencies which are there, you know, whether it is the whole area of waterproofing or it is the area of textures which we have kind of bought in which is there. But I think one area which would be an outlier in everything would be the whole area of the whole service brand. Yes, okay. 650 cities is where you're at right now. Yeah, where, where so I think that's something which has been my personal kind of passion in a very strong way because uh, I think worldwide there was a challenge. You know, when I used to speak to uh, international paint companies, uh, you know, uh, people used to say, you know, service is not something which this industry is made for. And numbers, joy and happiness is okay. <laughs> Stock market to... wants numbers. The number is 650 cities as we see it, okay. Revenue? In terms you of the revenue, we, we can't kind of reveal the revenue in terms of what is it. But I can tell you that our endeavor is that the service brand should become almost 10% of the overall revenue of Asian paints as we kind of go ahead. So that's the idea in terms of looking at it. And when I'm talking of 10%, I'm talking of the GMV here. Yeah. Okay, because uh, there is a lot of labor and other things which are involved. But I think that's the idea in terms of where we are, uh, in terms of making all the services, which includes the beautiful homes painting. We have the beautiful home service, which is there to that extent. We have the waterproofing, you know, smart assure service, which is there. So if you look at the, uh, you know, all these services, today we would be almost at about 6 to 7% of the total turnover and we want to kind of make it to about 10 percent and that's in about two years from now yeah let's talk about the challenges that you faced or challenges that you're likely to face and have a lot more challenging conversation when we go up sure. in the other parts of your sure sure let's go let's go up Everyone you speak to in the industry has many things to say about you, right from you being very, very passionate about your work to taking over 340 flights every year. What is it that, you know, you like so much about taking so many flights? I mean, what's happened here? <laughs> I think right from beginning, uh, when I look back, uh, you know, there have been so many kind of areas and challenges which have only kind of... Uh, given you a pump up in terms of doing something more greater, more stronger as you have kind of gone ahead. I recall uh, uh, back in times in 92, I was uh, uh, in Varanasi. And mm -hmm. at that point of time, you know, uh, I was actually kind of really uh, looking at, uh, you know, serving the customers during the curfew time. And that is something which did not go well with the authorities. And I was literally behind the bars for a day to oh. that extent. And then post that I went to uh, you know, uh, Surat, and before that, you know, the market used to call me the Jailwale Sahab in terms <laughs> of, in a way. So in Surat, uh, I think, uh, was another kind of uh, a very strong challenge which came in because at that point of time, the plague broke in. Yes. Okay. I never left Surat city during that entire time. I stayed in the warehouse, I slept in the warehouse, 
and that was a year we did our budgets uh, to that extent and that was the sales passion which kind of uh, was always all over me and I remember at the point of time I was just engaged and I used to tell my fiancé at that point of time that I am in Ahmedabad but I was in Surat all the time in terms of doing my work. And as I see it, post the sales stint also the challenges continued. You recall the story very fondly. Post your sales stint, you were asked to take up a stint which you had no idea about. All you were told by your boss was, you just have to go there and fix it. If you do that, you'll be great in the company. Tell me what that whole thing was because this is a very fascinating story. Not, not a lot of people know about this. I think how I was sold that job was, I was told that uh, it is the toughest job in Asian Pins. And it was no one can, uh, no one is willing to take that what job. What year was this? Okay, and this was getting into uh, heading a factory uh, near Kasna, which was in Greater Noida to that extent. And what was the challenge there? Why was it the toughest job in Asian Pins? See, it was the toughest job because uh, we had, we were at the bottom of our productivity in the plant. Okay, people never used to work. There's a lot of indiscipline in that plant in terms of what used to happen. And people were actually afraid of working there because uh, the overall environment was fairly threatening in terms of the way it was. And I think that was what was the propellant for me in terms of saying, hey, this is something where you will have to put in your muscle. And I just got married about two years back, okay? And uh, my wife was carrying at that point of time. And so it was not an easy decision in terms of saying that I need to kind of move into an environment which really takes 200% of me and really looked at doing it. So I think the first thing which I started was I spending nights in the plant, okay? So it was the first time ever that any executive or a manager would have spent night in the plant to that extent, along with the workers, to that extent. And there was a lot of, um, what do you say, worker unrest as well and uh, from jail wale sahab you also became a person who would travel with a police person because of security and all yeah so more than security there was a little bit of a violence in the plant as we saw it okay and i was uh, a little bit of a victim of that violence but i think uh, the whole area of uh, your steadfastness and your ability to kind of do thing got only bolstered by that act in terms of what happened we had a six months lockout in the plant but I was very clear that if you need to kind of set the plant back onto the rails, you need a surgery. And the way you did it, you did it in a fashion that you got everyone in. And when you just left the plant, it was the product plant which was doing the highest productivity in Asian Bits. He won't tell you this, but I have to tell you when he speaks about steadfast, for almost two, two and a half years, he had to change multiple cars and go with multiple security guards to that factory. So that's the kind of passion that we are talking about here and you know doggedness so to say so I mean amidst all of this that you faced I think you know all these new competitors coming in with the kind of monies that they are coming in should not affect you I I don't think so you know I'm, I'm uh, very clear about it because see as a brand you really are very very strong in terms of the way you do and not only that you're riding on your complacency it's the fact that you always keep on looking at making the brand do much more and leverage the brand as you kind of go ahead. Today, you are a market leader in terms of literally all the categories in terms of what are there in the market and even something which you have touched uh, as recent as home decor. Now you are as the number one uh, integrated home decor player in the country to that extent. Hmm. So we feel that given the strengths of the brand, the whole supply chain, which I think is a very, very big asset uh, to the brand in terms of what we bring onto the table or it is about the technology alignment so whether it is today getting the AI ML into the game or looking at the whole area of IOT and looking at so many newer areas of forecasting efficiencies which we kind of bring onto the table I think uh, the brand really rides on a lot of innovation a lot of areas which will always keep it ahead to that extent what keeps you ticking I think first of all, uh, for me, uh, relationships with stakeholders is a very, very big thing in terms of what I kind of really enjoy. And today I think I can really boast of saying that I know about 8,000 retailers by their first names in terms of what they do. And not only them, but a lot of them in terms of their spouses, their children and so on and so forth to that extent. And that goes for some of the bigger contractors as well and the architects. So relationships, that's what keeps Asian Paints, you know, steadfast with its entire ecosystem. Is it difficult to create this for some other brand? I mean, an Asian Paints distributor, what will it take for someone else to take that person away from Asian Paints, that ecosystem? 
So it's difficult, see, because you can woo a person with margins, higher profitability and so on and so forth for some time. But I think what really stays with you in terms of uh, the relationship which you have carved because as you go through life, I think those are the things which really hold you back and really kind of make you really in terms of almost conjoined with that brand as you kind of go forward. So I think it's about uh, uh, relationships and these relationships are not cultivated just over two to four years. It kind of goes into decades to that extent where you have je dealt with you know, the original generation then to the next one and now almost dealing with the second gen to that extent in terms of the way it is there. So, so I think it is literally a very, very strong bond which is very difficult for any brand to come. They could do it for the short term, but I think on the longer run, this is something which will always stay. What are the discussions like in the, in the board right now? So I think uh, the discussions become very strong in terms of, uh, you know, the board really saying, hey, let's kind of really sit down and kind of look at for a while in terms of what's happening and not keep on challenging everything which you kind of go to that extent. But I think the board uh, also likes the fact that uh, today you are a happening company or a happening brand, okay, and the fact that you kind of really continue the journey in terms of saying that, hey, uh, we're not going to stop. We're going to kind of look at something which is going to be a turnaround for the company as you look at the next decade. Next decade, uh, the last decade you've grown uh, sales at little around low teens, profits have grown around mid teens, your stock price has grown at around 20%. The next decade with all the opportunities that you're seeing, you foresee that to continue? I think the journey forward is uh, still very, very strong in terms of what I see. And as we kind of go ahead, uh, you know, uh, and look at the next uh, kind of decade, I think uh, as an organization, we would kind of look at numbers which could be closer to about anywhere between 11 and 12 billion in terms of going ahead to that extent. And it's not coming only from paints and coating. This is coming from all the categories we have created, the industrial sales as I spoke of, the home decor, the global business and so on and so forth. So I think it's going to be a combination of all this in terms of what we see. And given the fact that uh, India is a very strong market for us and the kind of growth which we envisage of the GDP going forward, I think this should be a reality. Oh, so I got my headline. I mean, the ne over the next decade, you lo looking at a one lakh crore top line for Asian paints across all verticals included. Um, you know, uh, when we speak about Asian paints, what really stands out is it's also a leadership factory. And that really talks about the culture of an organization. Because you look at, you know, Bharat Puri, ex Asian paints, now leading Pidilite. You have a bunch of others. You have Venkatesh Kini, you have Vipul Prakash. We were speaking about Rajneet Kohli, who's ex Asian paints, currently the CEO at Britannia. What is it that makes an Asian Paints employee so such a prized possession in the market? Uh, when you talk of leadership, you talk of parameters like being a game changer. You talk of parameters like managing ambiguity. You talk of parameters like bringing agility in decision making. So I think the fact that the culture has been so strong where there is no politics, but there is always good work to do and freedom to do good work. I think that is something which really holds people out because People can go and really say that one value which Asian Paints always will have is standing for each other's success. You've also gone on this big capex spree, which is part of it, backward integration, part of it, building more capacity. In terms of products, 12% of your new, uh, you know, revenue comes in from new innovative products. Promotions, you have said that you will increase your ad spends going forward. What does that mean in terms of quantitative benefits, in terms of margins, revenue, incremental you know reach that you have give me numbers so uh, you know as i said uh, the area of uh, new product and innovation uh, we have kind of done about almost about 300 new products in the last about seven years now and uh, they will continue to contribute to about 12 to 13 percent of a top line in terms of going forward i think that is something which is a very very strong source in terms of what we are bringing onto the table we have looked at a lot of uh, backward integration in terms of creating uh, you know uh, capacities for something which possibly uh, no competitor has done to that extent so whether it is things like opacifiers additives and so on so forth which are a big sum of our uh, in you know raw material buy i think all these will definitely add to about one one and a half percent of our overall margins going up as we kind of look at future the third area i think uh, we are looking at bringing more and more automation into the game in terms of how we can look at being the best cpt uh, across uh, the organizations and looking at therefore 
uh, bringing our overall area of overheads to an improvement of about uh, you know, one or two percentage of the total over, overall sales in terms of what we do to that extent. And finally, the area of brand equity, mm -hmm. where we feel that uh, today we would like to kind of have a market share of or, or a mind share of more than 85 percent in terms of going forward to that extent so that we can look at influencing not only the bottom of the pyramid, but look at influ influencing the luxury space in the India as we see more disposable incomes happening, more affluent families happening to that extent in terms of going forward. Would you let that flow into your margins or your margins will still remain at that 18 to 20 percent band so, and the remainder goes into brand building like you said? So we would largely say that we would kind of retain the same band. Okay, and look at really investing these into core areas of the organization which will always keep it leaping ahead. B2B opportunity, how big do you think that is? And how big do you think you can be in this? Very big. So today I would say that uh, B2B uh, is about 15 to 20% of our overall business in terms of how it is to that extent. And as I see it going forward, what we can do in terms of treating all these customers as one consumer for Asian paints going forward. So whether it is their industrial need or it's the decorative need or it is their home decor need okay can we kind of really look at taking the b2 market b2b market in a very big way as we kind of go forward 15 to 20 percent now how much bigger do you think it gets so i think uh, we are looking at saying that at least we should give it a five percent more push in terms of the contribution which kind of comes in but it's also margin diminutive right because it is but i think uh, there is where possibly uh, your ingenuity and your skills lies in terms of saying uh, can you talk of uh, products which are ingenious? Can you talk of patents which you can really get a higher price for? Because this is a business which pays for your technology. This is a business which pays for your solutions to that extent. So I think the idea here is don't have commodities here. Have solutions and have look at services which can really go and lap onto your newer technologies to give you margins. Which is your favorite Asian paints ad? One which I'm very uh, fond of is, is what I uh, I literally created along with Ogilvy was the Harghar. Harghar Chupchap se ye kehta hai ki andar isme kon rehta hai. Kitna chakra kiya tha tumne is hariram ko? Chhat batati hai ye kiska asma hai. Rang kehte hain kiska ye jahan hai. Kamron mein kiski kalpana jhalakti hai. Is farsh par nangi pair kiske bachche chalte hain. Harghar Chupchap se ye kehta hai ki andar isme kon rehta hai. Her uh, with Piyush's magic and his voice still remains one of the most remembered ads and I think it's propelling the brand uh, really very strongly because Har Ghar Kuch Kehta is the core of Asian Pits. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Amit. This Thank you. Incredible. Thank you. It's great speaking to you.